بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, this is your presenter, Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad, and we'll spend with you this episode on reflections upon the verses of the Quran. Uh, today, I selected one verse, but before I get into it, I'd love to uh, share with you uh, peace by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be unto all of you, and we should not forget at all that we need to thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us this uh, golden opportunity to share the little knowledge, the limited knowledge that we have, and to remind each, uh, each other of how to reflect uh, upon the verses of the Qur'an by understanding the words and by understanding the lines and what's in between them and trying to see the context of the verses and to analyze it and to see whether we apply them in our life or we just take them theoretically. This is a good verse again because it talks about the Quran which is so essential for Muslims, it's like air and like oxygen, like water. Uh, no Muslim can live without the Quran. So it's so essential. And that's why I selected this text, because it talks about the Quran. Uh, let's uh, read the verse together. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Wa qala al-lazina kafaru la tasma'u lihaadha al-Qur'ani wal-ghaw fihi this is verse number 26 or ayah number 26 in chapter number 48, uh, 41, excuse me, known as Fusilat. And uh, the meaning can be translated into, and those who disbelieve, disbelieve in the Quran, yes, or in Islam, say, listen not to this Quran. Listen not to this Quran and make noise in the midst of its recitation that you may overcome, overcome the Muslims. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful ayah. It's as, it's, it looks to me as if fresh that it has been revealed just an hour ago or so because it talks about issues that are running nowadays. Uh, let, let's try to... Uh, to see the strategy of the disbelievers to uh, counter the Qur'an and the effect of the Qur'an on them. Uh, they do know that the Qur'an has impact on them, even if they don't believe it, whether this impact is great or less. However, they still believe that it has impact. That's why they need to counter-attack it. They need to do something against that in order to prevent the Qur'an from affecting their hearts because they realize once they listen to it, they will be affected by it. And this is something that they don't know, they don't want. So the strategy that they adopted, they were good thinkers, not very good thinkers, but this is the strategy that they selected is that when we make noise when the Qur'an is recited, right? We will distract people from listening to the Qur'an. The message of the Qur'an will not directly reach them. And in this way, we can stop the effect of the Qur'an uh, from reaching the hearts of the people. Wow. Guess what? Believe it or not, until now, the strategy is being done in different countries with little modifications. But before I get into that, let me give you some examples that happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ to stop the effect of the Qur'an on the hearts of even the non-believers. One very famous story is the story of Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. Uh, Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira was one of the disbelievers. He didn't believe in the message of Muhammad ﷺ. Uh, however, 
when he listened to the Quran, he was so touched and affected to the degree that he made description of the Quran that even some Muslims could not do something similar to it. He said in, in the beautiful words of Arabic language, he said about it, and he was a disbeliever. He said, Wallahi, inna lahu la halawa, wa inna alayhi la talawa, wa inna alahu la musmir, wa inna adnahu la musmir, ya'lu wa la yu'la alayhi. These are his descriptions. Let me elaborate on this in English. He said, by Allah, uh, of course he swore by Allah, as you know that the Arabs believed in Allah, their problem is that they were associating the idols that they made with Almighty Allah in their ibadah. Anyway, he said that, oh by Allah, it's so sweet, it's covered with sweetness, the top of it is fruitful, the bottom of it is fruitful, and it goes high and high and high, and nothing can go higher than the Qur'an. Beautiful words made by a man who is labeled as a disbeliever. However, the impact of the Quran was so tremendous on him to the degree that he made these beautiful statements. The second story that happened to At-Tufail ibn Amr al-Dawsi. Tufail was one of the head uh, of the tribe. His tribe was the tribe of Daus, it was a very big uh, tribe. And uh, you know that at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the disbelievers used to monitor uh, the activities of the Muslims. And as it is happening right now in different format. Yeah, so he used to, uh, uh, the, 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 the disbelievers used to, yes, uh, make regular monitoring for the Muslims to see what they are doing. And uh, what happened is that every day from time to time they would assign a certain person to do the monitoring. So it was the turn of at tufail ibn Amr to monitor uh, the Muslims. So they advised him, they gave him some tips, uh, be away from him, don't come close because when you come close you will hear the Quran and, 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 and this will diffuse the whole plan that we are making. So be away from him. Just approach them from distance and see, monitor their actions. Uh, and they advised him to do what? They were scared that he may be exposed to the Quran. So they advised him to put some cotton inside his ears to prevent the words of the Quran from reaching his heart. Of course, from listening to it and it will affect his heart. So he accepted the advice and he used uh, this cotton or this dough in some narration and he went to Muhammad وسلم, and his people and he approached them from distance and when he came close he started to think what am I doing? It's so silly. I am a leader of my tribe. I have a mind to think why I'm behaving like that. I would take these things from my ears. I would go ahead and listen to what Muhammad وسلم, says. I would see this Quran. If I like it, I would accept it. If I don't like it, I throw it. But I'm behaving very sillily now. I would behave rationally because this is irrational. So he took the cotton out of his uh, ears and then he approached the Muslims and then he listened to the Quran. I'm not going to continue the whole story. I would uh, leave you to do uh, research by yourself. But when he came back to his people, this was the comment. When he went back to the disbelievers, when they saw him, they said, the man meaning at tufail ibn Amr al dawsi came back with a different face, meaning that he became a Muslim. They saw this on his face, this something so beautiful, you can distinguish Muslims by their face. You see their faces, yeah, not just by the beard and things like that, but, uh, but you can see from the faces that, alhamdulillah, it's so comfortable, 
because it accepted this religion. The disbelievers have seen this or had seen this on the face of at tufail Again, this is another example that shows that the effect of the Quran on the disbelievers. When the disbelievers have seen this and they cannot stop the Quran, they said, okay, let's counterattack this Quran by making some noises when it is recited so that people, it would not affect the people. So whenever Muhammad وسلم, recited the Quran, they would make noise to prevent its impact on the hearts of men. Nowadays, the same strategy is done differently. They use different techniques within the same strategy. They make lots of noises about the Quran. Some people would make statements, negative statements about the Quran, and the media would echo that and would spread this and would repeat it. And we've seen many examples happening in some European countries. Some examples are happening in India. Some examples are happening in different countries in the world. And this is by individual. However, yes, they are trying to make noises by making negative statements to distract people from listening to the Quran. Wow, it's the same strategy that had been done at the time of the Prophet وسلم, but it is made differently with some modifications of the technique because of the advancement and because of the technology that we have nowadays. Some people make it by, for example, you find that in most TVs that when the Quran is recited, perhaps, uh, let's say that uh, before there would be something like a dance or a belly dancing, after it would be a very important show that would distract people and would not let them focus on the Quran wholly. And you would find lots of attractive programs in the media trying to distract people from listening to the recitation of the Quran. I'm talking even in Islamic countries or so-called Islamic countries. This is so common in the world nowadays and alhamdulillah lots of Muslims uh, understood this and they try to alhamdulillah relate it and this, this is the importance of relating things to the Quran and seeing the similarities and the dissimilarities but try to imagine that a statement that had been said in the Quran 1400 years ago is still valid until nowadays and is applicable although it's a little bit applicable uh, differently and the whole purpose of that is that so that you may overcome, overcome Islam. And again, I'm reminding people, nobody can, can overcome the religion of Almighty Allah. You can overcome people, definitely you can overcome uh, arms, armies, whole armies, but you cannot overcome Almighty Allah because the creator of everything. And we've been see, we have seen that throughout history that the, the failure of those people to distract people from the Quran, alhamdulillah, Islam is labeled nowadays is the fastest growing religion in the whole world. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank you for listening and I hope next time we select another verse to reflect upon it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون